So I realize that this year marks year 30 since I was first paid to direct a TV show. I figured maybe this was an opportunity to expand the channel and, you know, share some of the skills I've learned over those 30 years and, in a sense, pay it forward, I suppose. By the way, you're really only going to see this arm because this arm over here is still in a sling. I had my shoulder worked on. But anyway, so I figured this is maybe the first opportunity or a great opportunity to go ahead and, uh, you know, share some stuff. So here I want to teach you guys with very little equipment how to shoot the perfect pour. That's a, is something that we in the industry and the commercial side call tabletop. Uh, tabletop work typically, you know, is uh, food oriented a lot of times, uh, small products, that kind of thing that you would see on a tabletop. There's uh, in commercial world, you know, directors tend to be pigeonholed. There's tabletop directors, there's comedy, there's pretty pictures. Really what I've done is mostly comedy and pretty pictures, but you know, pretty pictures also a lot of times includes things like tabletop. So this is the perfect pour. I decided to do this because I have a, a client from a little while ago that actually have become rather successful. It's a small distillery named McClintock. And we did some of, of their uh, early ads. Actually, we've done some of their ads for them in general. And uh, I was at my annual liquor store trip. I go, that's right, I go like once a year. That's how old I am. But um, I saw a bottle of McClintock, specifically their vodka, which is, by the way, excellent. So I figured this was a perfect opportunity. The stars just aligned. So the, what you're gonna need to do this is some lights. I mean, for this kind of stuff, you don't really need a whole lot of soft lights. But what you do need are is, is a bunch of smaller instruments, let's say. And of course, you're going to need a camera. This is what I shot it with, which happens to be a Sigma FP, which, by the way, I love this camera. This is like the greatest thing ever. It doesn't do everything well. And in fact, it doesn't do a whole lot of stuff. But what it does do, it does exceptionally well. This is the world's smallest full frame camera that shoots raw internally in 4K. So this is the camera that we used. What you're going to need is you're going to need basically uh, at least two lenses, you know, you need to do your wide establishing shot and your tighter shot. And then, uh, you know, so you can intercut and give yourself something to cut. Of course you want to do this in slow motion. I mean, who doesn't love slow motion? It works beautifully. So here we set the FP to 1080p at 120 frames per second. 120 frames per second is about right. 240 is even a little bit better if you have uh, the ability to go that high. But be aware that with video cameras, the faster they go, the more they give up. So one of the first things that typically goes out the window is uh, anti-aliasing. So you got to keep that in mind and be aware of that. Uh, this camera doesn't scale particularly well. That's another uh, issue, particularly in the highlights, but the image quality is exceptional and it is smooth and it is beautiful. And again, you want a couple of lenses. They should be pretty fast because you want your background to roll soft. Now, speaking of which, you do want a space that allows at least some throw behind your subject. And it's even better if there's some texture and some light back there. So let's go to the spot and let's check it out. We're going to walk through with the GoPro so you can see the setup. And then I'll show you what the footage turned out like. Let's go. And here's a jarring audio cut and welcome to our studio. So I'm going to do my best here. My, uh, my surgery arm is actually holding this thing, this GoPro up, but I wanted to show you guys exactly what we had to work with. So this is more or less where we had our wonderful bottle of Epiphany McClintock Vodka. If you find some, buy it. It's it's really, it's excellent. It's, it's, I think, in my opinion, better than Belvedere. Here's a glass that we chose to use and the two lenses that we used, and I will clear these out of here or at least move them off to the side so we'll have room to explore the other stuff. So I said we needed a wide shot. So again, we want to roll the background soft. So what that means is that we want a fairly long lens and we want it pretty fast. So this is an 85 millimeter Minolta Roker F2. It's a beautiful piece of glass. It's, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is our wide shot. And I know an 85 millimeter is not exactly a wide lens. It's more of a sort of a long portrait. Um, but in this case, the Sigma is a full frame camera, so it's gonna read a little bit wider and uh, it gives us the background we needed. So this was shot, this was our wide shot and it was just basically a lockdown and we effectively did the same action twice. So wide shot, Minolta. Tight shot is a Nikon 105, non-AI, I believe it's a non-AI, uh, F2.5. Uh, this is that legendary lens that shot the Afghan girl uh, photograph for National Geographic. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. You'll recognize it immediately. You go, oh, that. 
So this is a copy. I think I got this one at a thrift shop years ago. Um, fantastic lens. But this one is the one that did the exploratory work all over the, uh, the bottle and the pour and the glass. So we'll put that off to the side. As far as lighting goes, there really ain't much to this. In fact, the most, the fanciest light that we used would be this, sorry, this falconized pocket light. So this falconized pocket light, we just, all we did with this is we set it, and let me see if I can do this with one hand. I'm gonna power it on, there it is. And it is set to, I don't know if you can make that out, uh, 2,500 degrees Kelvin, and I left it right around 70%. Here it happens to be reading 69%. Um, so this is set to very tungsteny warm, and uh, all the, the purpose of this is just to warm up the background. That's all it does. So all we did was place it on the, um, where did we place it? I think we placed it just offset. Um, in fact, right back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it where I had it, was that where I had it? So I'm going to go and put it where I had it. So hold on one second. And I have to be honest, I'm not really that like hyper impressed with the, the Falcon eyes, that little light. It's, it's got a bunch of issues. It's, it's not the greatest thing in the world. Oh, and immediately overhead, by the way, we have these three little tungsten 10 watt under cabinet lights. So anyway, so now we're, we're starting to light our set. You're starting to kind of get the idea. If the background was rolling really soft and we were kind of tighter, you're kind of, kind of getting there, right? So the next thing we did is we needed a strong highlight from this side. For that, I used uh, this uh, Draycast light right here. It's like a 50 watt or so unit. It's I bought this on a on a B and H deal of the day type of thing. Uh, it's very similar to my Doom rays that I built some years ago, which are actually I think a little bit better, but they don't work off battery power. So this one does. So anyway, so this light was basically off to the side here, and then we needed another highlight and this one to play more on the glass. So I use this, I told you this was a, a low buck deal. Um, this is a pin spot. This is like a $20 pin spot from Amazon. Uh, that was the remote control I was holding earlier. We can turn the thing on. It's right now it's green. Let's see if we can get some flare. Flare, you bastard. So anyway, so it's different colors. We can go red, we can go blue, we can go white which looks blue because everything here is tungsten, very tungsten in the background. Um, and then they has various programs, but we just used it on white. And that is another really important trick. You generally, if you want the feeling of warmth, but still want colors to be accurate, let me shut this thing off. Then you want your background warm and your foreground, whether it's people or stuff to be lit daylight. So this is, close enough to daylight. And then we needed just kind of a little bit of a gentle general fill. So it, on top of the Sigma, which you probably saw in the other shot, we had this uh, little uh, mini burst. Now I love these things. These things, I use them all the time. So this is a digital juice light. It kicks out a ton of light for its size. This is the smallest of the three in the set that I have. Uh, trusty Eric, you've seen in my other videos, he's got a couple of sets of these things. They're fantastic, I love them. And they're very durable, well-built. Look, an actual switch and knob. When was the last time you saw that? Usually they make you use your uh, like your cell phone app, which is gonna go outdated in like five years. This thing will be around for a long time. It's very nice. So anyway, so those are the three lights. So that's all you needed to do. So then we set up our action. Our action was just trusty Eric standing back there. All he did was take some ice cubes, put them in the glass and pour. I know by this point in time, you're kind of wondering, well, what did it look like? Let's go see. So there you have it, a really cheap, really easy, really beautiful looking result in the ultimate pour shot. Hopefully this will be the first in, uh, in a whole bunch of videos that will crop up from time to time. So subscribe, stay tuned, a lot more to come, a lot more car antics, and you know, maybe somebody will pick up something from, you know, the last 30 years had to be good for something, right? Right. Subscribe. <laughs>